Um, web browser privacy mode is a simple way of not showing where you're going. Um, but there's actually a couple of cases where basically all of the web browsers that are being used um, have some ways where they actually keep that information. Um, because as you saw with the Ever cookie slide, there was a bunch of ways to store that information. Not all of them are being cleared with the, with the web browser privacy modes. So uh, yes, uh, it's provided um, uh, for, for you to use. It's just something to be aware of that not everything is actually uh, Everything may not actually be removed, and to see the particular document there for uh, or in the document folder for more information. Excuse me. Never cookie was a, a way to defeat the ever cookie, but it's. Uh, does it work with the current version of Firefox? It's only designed to work with Firefox 11. So that's just, that was something going back to the other cookie thing. Those people have tried to block it, but it doesn't really work correctly. Um, Kindle's experimental web browser is actually pretty good for um, obscurity. Because of the fact that it doesn't have Flash, it doesn't have JavaScript, or it only has a subset set of JavaScript, it doesn't have Java. It's actually reasonably good at being non-identifying. Um, so that's good to know. The only caveat here is that you must reboot your Kindle after visiting websites because when you go to and create an Ever cookie and you clear the Kindle's uh, cookie settings, the, while the cookies are removed, there's other um, remnants of the session that, that still could exist until you reboot the Kindle itself, um, which is in the which is in the window data and ping data. Those two mechanisms are not cleared uh, when you when you select uh, clear data from your Kindle session. I have a dumb question because I've never used a Kindle. Mm -hmm. So obviously you can type in URLs, but can you type in the HTML at once? Can you you can. If, if you're using the experimental browser, which is not the Amazon Silk. So this would be for the old, uh, the older gray style e-ink type browser. Um, you can type in manually using a keyboard, which is basically you use a little thumb pad to go left and then down, and select an A, up and down, and select a B. It's, it, it's not easy, but it does work. And it provides reasonably OK security. So it's interesting. That's, um, also, there's a couple of web browsers that are doing things a little bit weird. The Amazon Silk web browser basically makes two requests one from your IP address and one from the Amazon EC2 cloud to your uh, web browser when it happen when the request happens because it's trying to optimize the end user's uh, session. And that sounds a little weird and it is a little weird, but it's people haven't haven't complained too much about it, so it's just a weird web browser behavior, which other web browsers don't really do. The Opera Mini web browser, um, which is a web browser that's designed for low-powered Amazon, or not Amazon, low-powered web with cell phones. So there are, um, these would be more for not the, uh, not the, uh, iOS devices or the uh, Google phone devices, but would it be for the other cell phones that you used to see a lot? They would have Opera Mini installed. And in that case, if you're using Opera Mini, you would exit all through operamini.net and would have it exported for, for, the, for a particular client instead of the actual client's IP address. 
making the request itself because it tried to optimize the performance of the uh, website. So that's just something to be aware of. 